this was just 15 years ago. Nobody had ever seen anybody like me on the air who was just an average looking black person, gorgeous though I am. But you know what I mean? No frills, no whatever. And I look back at some of my videotape, I don't know how I got to be successful <laughs> myself wearing some of that, those hairdos and those uh, outfits. But you Gorgeous though she is, <laughs> Oprah Winfrey always understood the impact that she and her groundbreaking talk show had on this country. That is the subject of a new exhibit, Watching Oprah, the Oprah Winfrey Show and American Culture. It will open Friday at the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture. The exhibit features interactive interviews, movies, costumes, and artifacts from the Oprah Show's 25-year run, number one the whole time, just saying. Organizers say examines the ways that America shaped Oprah and how her work shaped our country today. Oprah is a major benefactor for the museum. It's also, we're proud of this, a 16-inch special contributor. Yes. We are glad that you are back at the table. And this, I was saying to people, this is what you love more than anything, is discussing yourself. Because, and I'm being very sarcastic, yes. this is ac absolutely what she hates. But I didn't know, Oprah, that you didn't realize what all was going into the exhibit. It's a big deal, 4,000 yeah. square feet. Yeah. It's in three parts of your life, your childhood, the show. And is it three parts of my life? three parts. It's very nice. Yep, three parts. <laughs> and then the impact that you've had on America. But you weren't involved in curating all the different things that will be on display. No, because I think they wanted to draw a line between the fact that I had worked as a part of the board to right. create the museum and then not to have anything to do with whatever was going into this exhibit. So I missed that meeting, that there was actually going to be an exhibit. Yeah. And um, so there were archivists who've been working on it for the past couple of years. And I, they would come to me for, and they really work with my team, uh, headed by Amy Weinblum, and they literally you know, we're asking for diaries, and I was like, let me see if I can give up that diary. Yeah. And looking for, you know, the first speeches I wrote when I was 12 and all of that stuff. So I, I'm not sure what's in it. Was there That's anything good. that was a revelation to you, which either you said, oh my gosh, I completely forgot that, or that recentered you after all these years? I, John, I can honestly tell you, I don't know what's in this exhibit. I'm going to see it for the first time today. I've, uh, my team's been giving up a lot of stuff from the show over the years. They've met with most of the producers. And um, so I think I'm going to be surprised. It'll be like. But you can talk about what it means. Walking down memory lane. Yeah, I can I, talk I do about think that. that Oprah, I'm, I'm so proud, actually, of, you know, I've known you for a long time. But the fact that this is happening and the fact that it's happening to you makes me so proud of what you've accomplished. And I can't imagine what it must be or feel like for you. Well, actually, you know, I just because I'm I'm here to talk about the book club later. Yes, yes. But yes. also, I knew that you all were going to be doing this segment. So I just started thinking about this last night because mm -hmm. I very much am a present moment person. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't given it a lot of thought. But as I was thinking about it last night, I thought, this is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. And the thing that makes me the most proud is uh, that it's about watching Oprah watching the Oprah Winfrey show and its impact on the culture. Right. Because there still is not, it's been off the air seven, seven years, years yeah. as of May 25th. And there is not a day that I go anywhere in the world that there aren't several people who come up to me and tell me about the impact the show's had on them. And that is no small thing for me. And I and always stop and say, well, what, what, people just say, I love you so much in your show. I say, tell me what actually happened. And usually I end up saying, oh, I, I get it. I raised you. Because okay. people tell the story of coming home at 4 o'clock and turning on the TV <laughs> and watching yes. with their mothers. And My mom always said, you capture someone's heart and you capture their mind. Mm -hmm. And I think you captured people's mind by talking about issues that people weren't talking about on television. Right. Race, sexual abuse. That's, I remember the first time we did, did a yeah. show on alcoholism, and there was a family of five, and I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know that white people had dysfunction. Because I grew up thinking that all white people were like, uh, leave it to beaver. Yeah. And so the first time I started having conversations with people with real dis the dysfunctions, with real family issues from all parts of the country, it was a revelation to me. But here's the biggest thing. When I had finished doing my school, and I was sitting in Maya Angelou's kitchen, you know this, Gail, yeah. and I said to her, oh, Maya, this is going to be my biggest legacy, the school. And Maya says, you have no idea what your legacy will be. Uh, your legacy, she says, is every life you touch. 
Your legacy is every person who's ever watched a show and made the decision they were going to go back to school. They were going to talk about Less domestic violence. Seconds. I'll just say this. Lonnie Bunch, the director, said Oprah Winfrey is a, pre is a person people trust just the way they trusted Walter Cronkite. And that's true. We'll, we'll be, be right back. I'm excited about it. Me too. Very much. Yeah.